Hello everyone, welcome back to Bad Mania. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to be tackling Batman Gotham Knight, the vignette film that came out right before uh, The Dark Knight and is ostensibly set in the same canon, or at least parts it of it or something. It when it came out. Yeah, it's weird though because it doesn't say that anymore in the box. Interesting. Yeah, and I remember that being sort of the way it was advertised, and of course we'll talk about it as we watch it, but there's things in it where it's clearly at least influenced really heavily by that, if not straight up acting like at least bits of it are are in that world. Because uh, I mean, I think it, I, I think like, doesn't it talk about the Narrows in this? And of oh, course yeah. their Lucius and Fox this also is just introduces, like, movie um, Lucius Fox. It introduces uh, not Renee, Renee Montoya and Harvey Bullock. Um, uh, Ramirez and... It introduces Ramirez, I forgot about and that. And the other guy. Yeah, uh, it'll come to me, I yeah, forget right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, one thing just uh, right at the gate before we start talking about this that I want to mention is I'm kind of surprised by how relatively few movies we've done so far before we get to this mm -hmm. and how much stuff we have after this. I mean, we started just really milking Batman for all it was worth after this with directed video, mm -hmm. you know, and other. Well, the directed video line just starts up. I think that's the third one. That's right. It's I just it's crazy to think like I feel like you know way the last decade has been a lot longer than the previous decade, at least for media stuff, and specifically Batman, just because they're, like, so when you think of Batman film history, it's all in the last decade. Well, I mean, and, so much of it is in the and, last decade. Well, well, and you also have to remember how much Batman was on TV. Because I don't think we don't That's have right. Batman at all until... Is it the end of War of the Batman? I don't remember what the chunk is between the the Batman and Brave and the Bold. I don't think there's much of a chunk at all. Because I, I mean, I mean, much of a gap at all. I don't think so because I remember when they announced Brave and the Bold, Dark Knight had just come out, and I was I was angry because I was like, "This is the time to do serious it's Batman." Time to do serious Batman. And yeah. we didn't, and we did, we went the exact opposite way. And I also remember that the Begins DVD came with a bonus disc that had two episodes of the Batman. So. The Batman has to just be ending then. Yeah. So, I don't think we so, had so a So you're right, it did stay on our purview on television that mm -hmm. whole time. And of course, uh, regardless of what Batman is on, is, is actually on TV, you also had Justice League for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And so the Batman was always somewhere. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so uh, yeah, we got into Gotham Knight, and I probably have not watched this since, I definitely haven't watched this, uh, yeah, since it came out. I was going to say the rewind. I never did a rewind on this. I will eventually get to that. This would be difficult to do a rewind, though. It would. I mean, I, you do the, the rewind in vignettes, just like the yep, thing is in yep. vignettes, and then you, you have you probably an in, in introduction that discusses it more on the whole a little bit, and then you get into the nitty-gritty with, with, the, with the singular thing. But, like, I remember thinking about this and sort of planning a little bit what I would do with it, Way back in the day, and then I never actually got to it. And I, and I skip, because I, I I don't do anything rewind really in order, and so yeah, like I did, you know, I start rewind with uh, Superman Doomsday, and so that is the first of these. But that was just because I wanted to talk about that movie, and uh, I think the next of the animated movies I did was uh, New Frontier. But after that, I jump all over the did place. Did you watch this in the lead up to Dark Knight? Or I did. did you not see it till later. I did. I bought it when it came out. So I. Uh, there was, I don't remember if it was DirecTV, it was one of the cable companies, had some of the, the vignettes up as things you could watch. Um, Interesting. And so I saw, I think, two of these before I see the actual What do you mean the thing. cable company? You mean like online somewhere? Or well, what are no, you talking no, about? No, no, like, like you know how like, um, uh, I can't think of, I, like, like on demand. Oh, I um, see. I, I forget which one it was, but like on demand had like some one of, of the, the really early streaming services? Yeah, yeah. Uh, had some of the vignettes for this, so I see like two of these because they were on there for free. Okay. Um, before I see the the whole thing, and did you watch those and go, well, I hope the other four are great because I didn't really care for these. <laughs> uh, no, I, I I like I was like, oh, that was really cool. Um, oh, okay. One yeah. of them is the one where he has the the shield, and I remember debating whether that yeah. made sense in this universe. <laughs> but like, you have to put yourself back in the place of like Dark Knight's about to come out. It looks pretty good. 
Um, everything we're seeing about the Joker after that first picture looks really good. Like, it, like we're all excited, but Dark Knight is not yet the, the greatest that. Bat superhero film yeah, ever there's made. There's still that fear of it's going to be Joker the movie, and yeah. So, so watching watching this, I was like, oh, this is this is cool, and it's it's more comic booky, which makes totally re it, it's really weird. We'll we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about it. and yeah. retroactively, it's 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 odd because. It's especially easy to say, well, this doesn't fit in that grounded reality because we weren't talking about it as hard as a realistic or grounded reality until after Dark Knight came out. Because Although I begins, do remember, from begins, you could go really anywhere. You you could you could go, you could really go down the rabbit hole of more, if not supernatural, just really you know, super high, science, high, super science and high tech. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting because I think the one that hurts the most continuity-wise, or like feels the most like it couldn't exist in the that universe. One. And Scarecrow is written by David Goyer. Yeah. So is we'll, that interesting? We'll, 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 we'll talk, talk about, about it. When we yeah, get and there. I'm afraid we wasted too much of what we ha of what little we have to say about this going into this. I, again, I have to mention that uh, with especially if for whatever reason this is the first of these you're jumping into with Batmania, um, these are just us watching a movie along with you and no prep at all. So uh, again, I've not watched this in years. Yeah, I'm really interested to see. Either what in this I even remember. So I uh, hope you enjoy watching this with us, and we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, this is not streaming anywhere right now, as far as I know. So if you want to watch it with us, you're going to need to get your hand on the DVD, and uh, make sure to get it past the menus, get it to timestamp zero, and get ready to press play as soon as I say now. Eric, are you ready, sir? I am ready. All right, here we go. It's vignette time, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone, please press play right now. Vignette mania. <laughs> Um, I will say, uh, if you don't own this DVD, it is worth getting because the commentary for this film is wonderful. I've never listened to that. It is. Did not know there was one. It is Denny O'Neill. Um, really? Um, who's the... I? Wow, sure enough. And I thought maybe that was like a, a, on a special edition or something, but I don't. But but it's it's on the regular DVD, and I don't think there ever was a special edition for this. I not as far as I'm aware. It's Denny. This is almost completely forgotten. I think at this point. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's Denny O'Neill. Um, who does the voice for Batman? Um, Kevin Conroy. Kevin, Kevin Conroy, and I want to say a third person, and it's just them talking Batman. They, the they're not even talking is, about this. Yeah, like they mentioned it a couple of times the animation and things. The and, bat building is cool. I and, like that. And Kevin Conroy is blown away by the by the animation. I'm wondering if I don't sit here and watch this and kind of enjoy it more as we're talking over it. Yeah. And I'm also, it starts with build, what I think is the worst short. Well, that yeah, but that's also maybe a good thing. That you know, you're get, right. get that out of the way. So this is the first one. Have I got? Because this for is you. the one that just. Rips off that episode from uh, New Batman Adventures, but it right? makes way less sense. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about. It, I guess when we get there, but like, this doesn't make any sense because th what works about have I or uh, about the 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 Batman episode um, is or Legends of the Dark Knight is what the episode is called. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all secondhand information. It's all I know. Someone who saw Batman and they told me it's like this. This is all firsthand accounts, and. I don't believe the things that they think they saw. Yeah, I just don't buy... And, and it's not like it's always completely in pitch black or anything. Like, I just don't buy that these kids are seeing like, such different things when they see Batman. Because, uh, like, like you, you have to play it the urban legend thing where it's mm. stories, right? Because when you do it that way, it's like, well, how, how did you see a cyborg thing? Yeah. How did you, how did you see a robot in broad daylight? <laughs> that's, my, that's my real question. Um, what do you think about this animation style? Well, I wanted to ask you a really, what will sound like a really ignorant question, I'm okay. sure, because I'm not an anime guy. Sure. And, and that is, why is it that um, so many animes, I just have to say, his, his uh, that guy's glasses look like uh, the glasses from the, 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 the Dark Knight things in Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yeah, the mutants. Yeah, from the mutants. Anyway, yeah. um, why do we so often do uh, fewer frames per second? Um, it is, uh, it's cost, it's cost saving. I, that would have been my um, assumption. Oh, but he's got a mohawk like that too. That's intentional, right? Yeah, it's got to be. One of the reasons, um, landscapes are gorgeous in this though. It anime really often looks better, at least character design wise, than American animation is because they figured out how to c cut costs and still look really good. Um, so and that's also where you get the, uh, the thing people like joke about where like you f just hold a frame and have like two characters' mouths moving. It saves money. So that they can do the really cool stuff that we have trouble doing. So they're making it more about the detail of the still images. Mm -hmm. Like that, that probably like is really easy to do because you're just is one picture slowly moving. Right, but you spent your time on these really intricately detailed buildings. Yeah, and stuff. 
Like you, like like you, you saw that building behind that guy a second ago, and just just the incredible detail in that. Uh, one mistake I think this made, and I know a lot of people talk about this when it came out. It's interesting because it's hard to really have any kind of a stake in this anymore. It's mm. like 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 it's it's easy to almost. I, I hesitate to use this word, but it's almost like go back and look at this in a more objective kind of way. Because um, if you had any expectation of like this might give you more of an insight into this world or something, it just it doesn't do that. Yeah. Um, so if you can just look at it as, at it as some random Batman stories, it might be better that way. But well, I think a big mistake they made was uh, having Kevin Conroy voice all of them. I like maybe one, but how about cast a different Batman for different. For different vignettes, and I, and I and I guess the idea is well, if it's all supposed to take place in the same universe, then you wouldn't do that. But then why would you have Kevin Conway doing uh, the Christian Bale Batman anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should, should have been someone trying to do a, a, a Christian Bale or Christian Bale if you could get him. Oh man, I, I watched this this uh, this Miyazaki film uh, the other day, and uh, Christian Bale is a voice in it. And there's one scene where he just does the Batman voice, That's but it awesome. came out in like '02, like before he gets Batman. Well, I feel like even by 08, he wasn't so big, it would have been inconceivable that he would do a thing like this. No, no, it's, and I think he does the voice for Batman Begins game. He does. Um, it's right after this that he has, like, just a deluge of films. Um, I want to say, like, 2009 is, like, the year of Christian Bale. He does, like, four movies. Yeah, I mean, just look at the detail. Yeah. Um, that's the, the Batman I buy the most, beautiful. because that's kind of how we always talk about how, like, he wants people to see him as like a wraith. Well, and what I like about it is when people are on fear toxin, that's kind of what they see. So if you if you have heightened adrenaline and you're really terrified when you see him, I just sort of like the idea that that something like that is is how it might come off to you. This is the one that I just don't <laughs> believe. <laughs> it's just to have, well, look, it is broad daylight. You're right. Well, well, well this is the bad guy. But we're gonna see Batman show right. up. I that's think, what I'm saying. I think Whatever this is one. it ends up being here, yeah, this is right out in the middle of the day. Yep. Does Batman just go around with a blue flower? Is that what it is? Yeah. Is, is, yeah. is everyone seeing him differently because they're on fear toxin? And this is the first time we got to see this universe again before or since begins. Right. Because this comes out before Dark Knight. Yeah, which is kind of surreal. Going back and thinking about it. Oh no, this is the demon one. Which I also still I don't still buy. don't buy it though. Yeah, yeah like she's seeing Man Bat. Why? I'm not a huge fan of the character models in this, but the animation is gorgeous. Yeah, and or this I should is, say uh, again, the cityscapes. But I also think it's well animated. Well, and this is this is a style that they is not like as popular. But like I've seen a number of anime things like this, and there's a there's a short like this in um, the Animatrix. Which is a much, which does a much better job of just kind of living in that universe. That was actually a big question I was going to ask you because these come out in somewhat close proximity, if memory serves. Uh, no, no, no. This would have been a, a, three or four years after that, wouldn't it? Well, but the Animatrix kicks off a thing where we where we like to do. And this is the, the first one I think that also vignette, does the vignette things. thing. Okay. But there's a Riddick tie-in movie that's anime, and there's a. Um, Van Helsing movie that's also anime. Well, I feel like since then we've done it with some video games. Uh, but I was going to ask you which which of these you thought was better, the sort of the Animatrix, and, I, and I'm leaning toward Animatrix. I go towards Animatrix. I haven't seen the Animatrix in years. And it I have watched multiple times. Um, I don't love the Animatrix, um, but I also haven't seen it long. It didn't give me what I wanted it when I first watched it. What which did was, you want with that? I wanted more explanation for things. Yeah, sure. And I got something that was kind of in the world, and some of them I did. Like... People love that one with the kids and the yeah, I think and it's great. thing. And I like when I watched, I was like, "But what about like the Matrix?" Yeah, um, I, I might like it better. But you can't it expect the tie-in thing to give you major answers in in a universe where you know. I know, that but I was like 12. a tiny fraction of the people <laughs> that see that, that saw those movies is going to go look at that. What I liked about that one was just the. The variety of animation styles, and that's the one I think looks like this. Is the the kid story in that kind of looks it, like this? It, I was thinking that too. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the same houses work on this that work on that because the last one, the Deadshot one, that was the assumption I made when I saw um, this. I think is Madhouse, and it looks like I don't know if it's the same director, but the guy that did the Samurai story in the Animatrix, um, that one is the is a uh, Kawajiri. Uh, and he did Vampire D and Ninja Scroll, and I think he might direct the last short. If not, it's done in his style. This is one of those things where it's kind of... 
an excuse for some cool action sequences and like it's really well storyboarded and stuff, but there's no story here. My my biggest problem with this movie has always been no, it, I just mean this this it particular video. Doesn't vignette. work hard enough to feel like it's part of the Dark Knight universe. And if it's not gonna be part of the Dark Knight universe, it doesn't use Batman well. Like just make a bunch of different cool Batman anime vignettes, I'm sure you'd get some really cool things. Yeah. It's it's handcuffed by being the Dark Knight universe, but also it doesn't care enough about being a Dark Knight person. I would love to see this done again, because you could do a bunch of different universes, and you could do one or two sort of Elseworlds things, where you have, like, crazy like Batman Batman Ninja. From, yeah, like Batman Ninja, or like, a, you know, you know a, a Batman that's like an alien from another planet, or an evil Batman, or you yeah, know, whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah, Batman with a giant robot. Yeah. Mac, Mac Batman. Yeah, no, I, I really would like to do this again with Batman, and just kind of let the Japanese do whatever they want. Yeah. Because it's also written by American writers. Um, I don't think they give us the credits here until the end, but um, it's all American writers. And that may was maybe a mistake too. Like, like how did those two ideas get combined like that? Where it's like we're gonna do kind of an anime, but it's gonna be well, I a think lead that's how Dark Animatrix is. Like they're looking at Animatrix hard. I think Animatrix is written all by American writers, and it's also a lead into sure, that's a little bit, revolutions. Here's the thing, though. With Animatrix, it's less counterintuitive because that's already drawing from a lot of Japanese influences, and it's and, and it's and a it, universe. Oh, this isn't yet a universe. It's right, building exactly. Batman. There it is. Nope. Broad daylight. I don't buy this. I don't buy this for a second. And in this, yeah, and in the, you're right. That is broad. That's so weird. And in this first, uh, that sounds so weird with Kevin Conroy, just give yep. me different Batmans. Yep. And I would even make the argument that if these kids are somehow seeing a totally different Batman, each of them, mm. he should sound different too. Yeah. He should have a different voice every time. Yeah. Now, is it possible, because we're talking over this, I haven't seen this in forever, is the idea maybe that they didn't all see this different thing, these different things, and they're just like making it up to try to impress their friends? Is that what it, it is? It could be, but the thing is that it seems like they all saw it in the same day. Because it's the same villain, and it seems like they all saw different parts of the same story. The, yeah, like different parts of the story. And, 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 and at the end of this, it's going to tie back into them, and ba That's they're going right. to see Batman fighting him. And it, So it's clearly they all actually saw him, because it's the same bad guy. There's a lot of action serial in this score, and also in the way it's animated, too, mm -hmm. uh, is storyboarded. But um, I'm actually really digging on the score quite a bit. There's a lot of Fleischer in it. Yeah, yeah. Especially in that robot stuff. And the backgrounds. Yeah, but I, but I was just talking about the, the soundtrack. But yeah, right, I guess they all are kind of surprised to see. And then when we see the real Batman, he's all, like, pudgy and weird-looking. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's worked out in a long time. He no, and to, he doesn't look like the Dark Knight Batman. He needs to lay off the or chicken the in that Batman. Batman. I don't know what's going on there. Um, That's also, I think, a mistake. Is no costume in this looks like it was modeled on the Begins. The Begins. Suit. Suit. Yeah, and and that's why, like I really question if that whole it's going to be a lead into Dark Knight thing wasn't somewhat of an afterthought. Except that we have Warts and Ramira. But maybe the idea was they they had one that was doing it. And then they I, well, and the scarecrow thing. Or maybe they just didn't communicate it right. Where like some of them weren't so because why would you open with this one? There's nothing about this that screams. And I don't want to harp on this too much, but there, there's there's nothing about this first vignette that screams it's in that world at all. And and like we only do scarecrow because scarecrow is in begins. We know it's going to be Dark Knight, but this doesn't match with Dark Knight at all. When when we get to that, like it's very strange. Um, the choices that they made. And then the question is, like, is some of it more okay if you ignore that part? I mean, if you, if you no, because that fact? Be because I think I think if it's not part of the Dark Knight universe, it's a bunch of dull it stories. Feels kind of superfluous and um, like they should have they should have had they should have been more out there. Like Batman Ninja is going to be. Yeah, it just if it should feel like a compilation album. Yeah, I want to see the Japanese do a riff on Batman. I, I like. Like, why didn't we get more of that if that's what it is? Like, that, it feels so handcuffed. You want it to look like an award show where, or, or, like, or like an awards thing where you're, you're watching um, a bunch of uh, efforts and you have to pick the best one? You, know, you want it to feel like that. Yeah. Um, this is the yeah, one that written by... Well, 
So so far, this is exactly the way I remember it. He's just kind of dull and disappointing. Like that that, that for, and, and and the the frustrating thing is, besides the character models themselves and the faces, that's that's a really pretty short. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's not. It's not Warts. It's um. It's a guy who's supposed to be Christmas uh, Christmas Allen. Is that what it is? Because this is written by Rucka. Okay. And so it's kind oh, of Rucka like, wrote this. Rucka wrote this, and that's why so that is Christmas. And Allen, so yeah. like uh, Ramirez, you know, is is kind of modeled on Renee Montoya. So they brought him in to do this short with her and. But you know who he looks like in the face? They drawn him to look exactly like Terry Fitzgerald from Spawn. Yeah, a little bit. He looks just like that guy. And this looks a lot like the and this Spawn looks a lot series. like the HBO series, yeah, with uh, the way everything kind of kind of glows. It's got that kind of Vaseline on the lens thing, and the the facial, the character, which works in Spawn in a way it doesn't work like. in the directed video animated movies. Yeah, I like the look of this a lot. Yeah, me too. It's really creepy. There's some other things that this reminds me of. I know, I know, I, I've brought this up in some other things recently, but uh, oh, he is Christmas Allen. These, yeah, 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 they, they okay. named him. Um, but yeah, but yeah, in, in, some of these faces are are, are kind of Helsing and some yeah, other yeah. things that I've some of their animes that I've dabbled in. I think that's Gonzo. Is, I only, is Helsing. I only dabble in anime. I don't know anime. Um, yeah, I think Gonzo is is Helsing, and that might be this this house. Okay. Um, I think. It's been a while since I watched the original Hellsing. Okay, there's a Maroney na name drop, but that's a thing that he easily could have used without this being mm. in the Dark Knight universe. But it is a younger-looking Gordon. And he's captain, or he's lieutenant. He's lieutenant in this. He's not commissioner. So, yeah, it, it obviously wasn't an afterthought then. I guess the idea was just they... they very loosely asked them to make it sort of fit in that. It seems like they asked them to do that and then let none of them read the script for Dark Knight. Uh huh. Which I want to say I've heard Rucka say. Where like he's like he's like yeah it's 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 Alan and um, but then how did they know about Montoya? Maroney, but it's not Montoya because well Maroney's in Begins. Is he? Yeah. I think maybe not. Uh. -huh. I thought maybe he was mentioned, but maybe you're right. I don't believe so. But but they also know that it's not Montoya. They know it's Ramirez. But I don't know if he knows anything about. Like I want to say he said something where he's like, he's like, yeah, for some reason it's not Montoya, and the reason is that it, she's a turncoat. It's interesting because in the subtitles they name her Anna. I don't think she even gets a first name in Dark Knight. I'm not sure. I don't remember them ever calling her anything but Ramirez. Maybe it's in the it made it in the credits. And it might be in the subtitles in that too, because I don't think we've actually heard anybody. In dialogue, call her that in this either. Mm. I really like the atmosphere of this one. Me too. This is kind of what I would like a Batman anime to look like. Yeah, we'll get to. You can watch an hour and a half of the this. one at the very end. The Deadshot one is like I'm excited for Batman Ninja, but I don't like that cell shaded thing. Um, the one at the, the the Deadshot short at the end of this is what I want that to look like. Uh, and and we'll we'll we'll. we'll We'll, talk about well, I mean, that. I want Batman Ninja to look exactly like it does, but just not be cel shaded. Yeah, like, yeah. That's that's a case where I like the designs more than I like the animations. Yeah, style. yeah. Well, that, that's that's what I'm saying. Is I want the the shorts at the end is how I want it to be. Animated. You want it to move yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um. And I also think like they brought him in because he's still doing or just finished doing Gotham Central. And we know that they know them because the interrogation scene with the Joker is inspired by the interrogation scene of the, from the Joker in Gotham Central. Yeah. Um, and they're like, well, just do like a Gotham Central thing. The problem is th he's not doing a Gotham Central thing because there are no supervillains. It is not the cops dealing with a supervillain. No, it's only it's, Gotham Central in the sense that it's focused on the cops. Right? Yeah. Yeah, if this is the house we think it is, they love those, like, creepy up close zombie looking faces. Yeah, yeah. They're really into that. It looks almost like a... like a disturbed music video. Yeah. Like the, like the one that Todd McFarlane did designs for. Yeah, I think he Which did Which is the best looking Todd McFarlane thing. It's great. Uh, Land of Confusion. But I think he did a good... Well, well he's definitely done a lot of uh, album covers yes, for them. Yes, yes. But I really like that Atlantic Confusion music video. Yeah, it's amazing. I wish they'd do a show that looks like that. See, I'd almost like to see some kind of a combination between the two styles of this in, 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 in the first one, because I like 
the uh, I like the faces in this better, but it would be cool to see that integrated with the photorealism of the of backgrounds. The backgrounds, yeah, mm -hmm. which uh, looks a which looked a lot like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, yeah, it did. I'm not sure if that director does one of these, but he might, because I think he does one of the the Animatrix shorts. But I can't think what that guy's name is. Does Alan die in? The, I can't remember, but like he's not in the movies. Like I feel like he might die in he this. He might just die in this. <laughs> we'll be surprised because it's been so long. I think in Gotham they just wrote him out. And does anyone or really? No, they didn't even write him out. They just had, didn't bother ever bring him out. I'm pretty sure he didn't die in that. Does anyone really love and know this material? Like, is anyone? Do you think we will get comments? Or like, you're being I, too hard on, in, on Gotham. In Knights. fact, that's a that's a question I was gonna pose at the beginning of this. I'm I'm, I'm interested to see what the comments are like for this and if there's anybody that just really loves this movie. I feel like most people that were there at the I time... I remember a consensus when this came out where it was like, oh, that's disappointing. That could have been better. But I think, I think a lot of people said well, well, what we've said, which is there's lots of effort in the animation. Mm. In a way, there's not so much in the writing. Um, I... Like, I feel like people that were there... Or that's not entirely fair. It's more like a tying people's hands behind their back. Because, I mean, like, I'm sure Ruck is doing the best yeah, he can with yeah. what he's got here. How do we not do a Joker story in this? If we're leading up to Dark Knight, we know Joker was doing stuff. Why don't we do a whole one that doesn't have Batman? Just, like, that's Joker. not That's not surprising to me. And that's why you kind of don't want it to be set in that universe. Because they're not going to want Somebody's doing to it. establish yeah. that Joker and something else. That's, that's true. not surprising that's true. at all. There was so much anticipation for what he was going to be like that could have that could have stopped people from wanting to go to the theater. You wouldn't want that. That's true. Um, or just shown their hand too much. But I, I feel like and then you get some other actor that has to come in and pretend like he's doing Heath Ledger before we really get to see Heath Ledger. Yeah, or, or or he's just doing something completely different. Yeah, you don't you don't want that. Um, or or if because you know they just put Maroney in this weird. That's not what or, he looks like either. Or if uh, we see Maroney, um, what was I gonna say? Or or if like because we have uh, Kevin Conroy, we also have to have Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mark Hamill. We want you to to kind of rein it in a little bit and then do a Heath Ledger. But I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> we'll give you the trailers and nothing else. Um. But yeah, I feel like people that were there at the time while Dark Knight was coming out probably remember this as being a disappointing thing. And I think if 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 you're a little bit younger, you either don't know this exists or don't care. Yeah. Like I, I just I'm sure there are people that really like this, but Is I, this gonna ultimately kind of feel like the most superfluous thing we're doing? I mean there's other no, We did Sub Zero. There's other movie. Well, and Mystery of the Batwoman. No, no, okay, Mystery of the Batwoman, absolutely, but people but you know people stand by Sub Zero. Yeah. And yeah, there are people like Sub Zero. I had a lot of complaints when I did the rewind on that, oh, being too hard on it. Really? So yeah, no, you're not okay. right about that. There okay. are people who love Sub Zero, okay. and I think there's people who have a lot of nostalgia for that movie. But, um, but obviously, there's some more recent things where, like, you know, those uh, kid movies based on action figures that we're gonna do a little bit later. Like, nobody's gonna know. A lot of people aren't gonna know those. Um, yeah, but I, I, I bet you there are people that love those. Yeah, I bet you there is a fan base for that. Well, and. I've only seen like ten minutes of one, but it was super clever. Like, I'm curious to get into those because those are going to be blind watches. Yeah, yeah. Were those the only ones that are blind watches for both of us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think so. Oh, hey, Batman's in the short. Oh, there he is! Look at that cape. Yeah, that was an he almost great, great cape. I love that. He doesn't look like Batman Begins Batman, but no, he looks great. But he, but he looks awesome. In the cowl a little bit. He's got the. Okay, his belt is a little begins, and he's got the chin piece. Doesn't Begins have a chin piece? Now that I'm saying that, I'm not even. I don't think so, actually. Yeah, now that I'm saying that, I guess it doesn't. Whatever, I love that costume. Um, <laughs> I was not buying the sheer number of bullets flying earlier. I was counting the number of men and wondering if somehow, or rather, they were getting buckshot from their pistols? Or did people have machine guns and I missed that they no, had no, machine no, no, guns? No, 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 they had machine guns. Oh, okay. 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 No, 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 they had machine guns. Um, 
And that's very Okay, annoying. but they didn't have shotguns. Like, the way they were firing, it didn't look like machine gun fire. It looked like buckshot. Like... No, it looked like machine gun fire to me. Do you think? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of them. God, that's a gorgeous shot. Two... Okay, so we did this entire vignette for, for that shot. Bits. Yeah. Batman in the fire. That's... Yeah. And I will walk through the fire and let it burn. Yeah. Watched that yesterday for the first time in a lot of years. Really? Yeah. We showed it to Jason. That was a lot of fun. We're talking about the Buffy musical, Once More I, with Feeling. I, uh, I I listen to that soundtrack every once in a while. I At do least too. the songs I like. But I tell you, man, I can't watch that without tearing up. Really? Yeah, every time. And it got me last night because I hadn't seen it in a long time. And I just, ugh. Which part? Some of it is just stuff I, I think oh, is it, so clever, I just can't even believe it exists, and so it makes me tear up. I have that with some things where it's just like tears of joy. Yeah, make fun of me. I have that. And also, uh, but, 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 the, but the big thing is, uh, we're not even talking about this right now. I, 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 love it when we have a, I love it when we have a Batman with a, yeah. uh, with a cape that closes, and, he's, and it looks like he's got a bat that fastens it together. I don't know how that works, because he had it open earlier. Like, like does he... Anyway, um, it, uh, don't be Kevin Conroy because you don't fit with this material at all. Uh, also, we're gonna find out that's not true in the movie. That that's a really great, but yeah, he's he's talking about Jim Gordon as a good judge of character. Um, is it in the shape of a bed? I that ends up being a very Dark Knight thing. <laughs> um, no, I have... thought that was in the shape of like his eye. Okay, so this is this no, is one of the shorts like I saw. A, it looked like a bed. This is field test. Um, okay. This okay. is the weirdest one because Kevin Conroy tries to do a younger Bruce Wayne voice because the character model looks younger, which again does not track with because they should all be the same Batman. Yeah, and in the in it the should all be between the Begins and Dark Knight. Yeah. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful short. But yeah, I was just gonna say the the you you asked what what part specifically yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. that like I teared up at watching that again. It's it's when it's when. Uh, she sings to her friends that she came back from heaven. It's that. It's that whole beat. Um, and some of it's just the music in that. Mm -hmm. It's not anything like. No, the movie. he doesn't. And that. Well, that's I said he's just way. like him. He's yeah. he's just like him in characterization. I guess, yeah, or at least yeah. in the role he's playing. Oh, you're right. He is trying to do a young Bruce Wayne stream. Oh yeah, he no, he's trying to be younger, and it's weird. And it's odd because this is just a couple of years before he's going to do Arkham Asylum, or is it a year before Arkham Asylum? I think it's a year because yeah, the Dark Knight what, DVD 09? has a trailer for Arkham Asylum. So what is this Batmobile? Uh, it looks kind of like the '89 one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like if you married '89 with the Tumblr. It's really strange. Oh, yeah, I don't think we get the tumbler in this either. Because in the back, it looks like that car. But then it gets real tankish. Does it come and blow away it is black? Again, I don't want to harp on the fact that this doesn't match up at all with the Dark Knight continuity, but where's that car come from? Yeah, what that's like all it? we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the only thing of interest to talk about with yeah, these, is how it doesn't match. Who designed that? Is Is it... What, was it an old R and D thing? What is it like? My watch. How many sci-fi sci and comic book things have you seen that scene where you turn on some machine and all the metal in the room? It's in Spider-Man Two. Isn't comes it? It's in Spider-Man Two. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else it's in? It's in Captain Invincible. Yeah, but well, that's different. He's got magnetic powers. <laughs> and it's sexy. <laughs> And this is such a weird decision to do as a short for Batman because this is an entire Batman short about the Superman thing where if bullets bounce off of him, what if they hit other people? Oh, yeah. That is the point of this short. I, I honestly, the only thing I remembered about this is it's about tech things and this guy doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman. That, that, like, that's all I remember about it. But you see, it like shoots away the bullets and then later it's gonna like hit somebody so like we made a Batman short about a Superman problem 
which is very strange. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it is the Superman thing, but it's also just, like, responsibility with advanced technology yeah. and making sure that you're not seeing yourself as above the people that you're trying to save. Um, you could... It, it's interesting that we're talking about how they these, these writers probably didn't have access to that script. Because, you know, a way I could almost see this as a lead-in to the cell phone conundrum. Yeah. Well, and this is a thing that feels more... Like, this feels really out there for Dark Knight, but not as much for Begins. It still feels maybe a little heightened for Begins. Because, like, if this is a mistake Lucius Fox himself makes, because he seems really excited about this tech and it's his idea, mm -hmm. um, if, if, if we run into a place where he's afraid people are going to get hurt with this and it's his fault, I, I kind of like the idea of that informing the guy who says, yeah, no, I'm not going to spy on people. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That was the longest sign. It just kept going. Yeah. First annual I golf accept, tournament. expecting, for like, parentheses and ellipses and... It is. It is about setting a tone. I think this is one of the ones with the through lines, because this kind of pretends it has through lines. I think this guy is in the final short. I think he gets shot by Deadshot, but I'm not sure... Oh, weird. So they're trying to pretend like it's more of a piece than just a bunch of random shorts. Yeah, and they keep... And that happens a couple of times. Like, I think the thing with... Instead of just having some, like, green glowing light ball that goes between each of them... Well, he's telling the stories. And he's in all of the stories. I'm just saying, they could have something like that. Yeah, yeah. This could all be stories like Batman's telling someone. Or like, Alfred. I mean, that's Batman, your... That's Batman's, your Batman's telling Alfred a story about kids who saw him that were telling stories about him. <laughs> I'm not saying with these vignettes specifically, but wouldn't that be kind of the obvious, easy frame device? Yeah, yeah. Is just to have Alfred maybe, I don't know, talking to someone. Like, I don't know who it would be, but... Or maybe, like, Leslie Tompkins and, and Alfred like are playing golf. Like, recording his missions or something. We're watching golf, I don't know. For posterity. Um... But, yeah, I want to say the, the Crossfire one that we just saw comes back a little bit somehow... Okay. I want to say there's some interconnected threads that pretend that this is one big story, but it's not. It doesn't work that way. Not enough. And I bet you all the writers didn't communicate either. Yeah. Well, and I don't mean that negatively. That's on probably the writers. their like, fault. I mean, they were, yeah, yeah. They were probably given these almost like separate yeah. projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't mean to throw the writers on the bus. Like I'm, I'm willing to bet they were just said like go write this thing, and like they weren't told who else was working on this. We have six other. entirely different studios working yeah. on something. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure none of these animation studios were looking at the other studios See, either. See, the last words you would you, you would expect a lot of people to, to use describing this movie would be like bold and uh, I, I I forget what I was, I was going to say, but like yeah 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 bold and daring and that that kind of thing. But the animation is sometimes that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in some ways, some of this is the best uh, we've ever seen Batman. Is what I was gonna say, um, I think animation-wise, a lot of this is really ambitious. Yeah. So like this, like he wasn't moving; he was just like this. Yeah. That's how they save money. They figured out you can do things like that, and you could save a little bit of money here and then. No, and again, that I just wasn't totally sure if that's why we drop frames. It's just once one. It's, it's a thing that, like, once I started noticing it, I can't not notice it. I'm like, no one's moving! He's just doing this, and his mouth is moving. Yeah, but it's funny, because I'm not... Uh, of course, I didn't really grow up with anime, but I did see a few things that were in that mode when I was a kid, and so I'm not surprised by it when I see it. Mm. Like, uh... Uh, Speed Racer. Yes, well, Speed Racer is most is most famous, and for for the, the talking a lot and the just... <laughs> really jerky movements. Um, I think also, when, when you have uh, fewer frames per second, and you watch it for a long enough time, you just get used to it. You mm -hmm. kind of, you don't even think about about that fact anymore. Why is this bat suit so different from all the other ones? Is it supposed to be like a... Well, oh, okay, I, I guess it's because it's got the shield thing, but still, like, why is the mask so different? Well, and the mask reminds me of a mask in... Uh, Berserk. Uh, there's a character who has a mask that looks almost identical, but it's white and doesn't have that bad ears. Um, it's got an almost like 18th or like 19th century thing going on, like which is kind of when Berserk is set. So that makes sense for that. Uh, it also looks like. Well, I'm reminded by of uh, Gotham by Gaslight when I look at that. Mm. 
And it's also got... Uh, I'm not saying it's that suit, but I'm reminded of it. There's a, there's a, there's a film in the 70s called Phantom of the Paradise, um, which I'm convinced was an inspiration on The Mask and Berserk, which might have also been an inspiration on this, but I'm not sure. But it's got a very similar mask. I think that costume would make for a delightful action figure. Like, yeah! Like, I don't hate this costume. It's just weird, again, if it's the Begins Dark Knight thing. Uh, you know that when they made each and every short, because none of them were communicating with each other, each one was like, well, everyone else is just going to do the suit for the movie. What if let's, we experiment a little bit? Yeah. But it's weird because it, it, this does kind of have this feel, uh, even if this wasn't the, in, the intent, it does kind of have that this feel of this is an early Batman adventure, but it's all an early Batman adventure. Yeah. Did we not even know how much time passed between Begins and Dark Knight? Yeah, I don't. Did, did, did maybe some of these some of these folks not know that? Now, I do think the the elongated nose is kind of a mistake. I think that's a little bit silly. And well, that's the one that makes it look most like the uh, that bizarre. The thing is, it looks okay in in, in the front, on, but in yeah. profile, it looks kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? Do you think that guy is seeing a man bat and that guy is seeing a cyborg? Um, they did not animate the lips moving enough for how much dialogue he needed to have there, or they animated it too much. No, and I think it's just funny it anyway really that, that he that he drops and it, it. It almost seems like it's like this self mocking, making fun of anime thing, where even though this is uh, English in the first place, it's almost like. Kevin Conroy is having to talk really fast because they animated it move yeah, with his yeah. mouth too fast. It's hilarious. It's like you don't even have to worry about that. It's not animated for Japanese speaking. Yep. I really love the look of this one. Um, and that also doesn't look like the Wayne building. And <laughs> no, not, not, not at all. I still say if you just try to forget that whole thing, it's maybe a little bit better. But then it, but then it reminds then you of it in weird ways. But but it reminds you of it in weird places. But see, I don't, I don't have that whole thing. Like, I don't need it to have anything to do with anything else. Well, no, I mean because the stories are boring and unambitious. Yeah, like that's what I mean by by pointless. I, I don't mean like, like well, it doesn't. If, if I just think about it not tying in. Well, then its entire purpose of tying is. I mean, none well, of these stories are, are interesting big enough. Super villains and stuff yeah. because it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can't get away from it. Like I said, I don't want to harp on it, but we can't get away from it. Okay, I think this there is. There is an the... okay morality play in that, I guess. Yeah. That that would have been a fine uh, if it was the lackluster short. Um, I think this is the one written by David Goyer. If it's got Killer Croc and it's got got um, Scarecrow, I think this is the one written by David Goyer. Or. Because it, it's almost a two-parter. This one will lead into the next one, and one of the two of them is written by David. I need a blimp. I really need a blimp in this. Yeah, uh, yeah. In this white shot here. Now, this is gorgeous. It's 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 lovely. Look at the gargoyles. And it's that bat symbol. Dang it! Well, and I know it changes in um. Oh, in, look at that cape in Dark Knight. Look but, at that cape. This looks like an anime version of the Begins Gotham. This is so pretty. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right, it does. It almost looks like Tim Saylor. Yeah. Yeah, and this looks a lot like... I wonder if this is the same house? This looks a lot like the uh, animation in the Black Freighter stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say... I've never oh, watched Black Friday. There's Ramirez again. Yep. Yeah. And there's Alan again. Spoiler alert, but she's going to cause big problems for Jim Gordon. Alan must die somewhere in this thing, right? Like, <laughs> we put him in this. He's not in the movie. Yeah, like, where is he? You might have thought they would use this to uh, introduce not Bullock. Yeah, yeah. Warts? Wart? I can't remember his name. Cause, cause, cause you I keep saying that. I don't know. I don't remember what because, his name Because is. I know Harvey Dent has the thing where he's like, you're sitting down over there with scum like Warts and Ramirez. And so I think that's No, not that's not what I'm talking about. He's not a bad he's not a bad guy. I'm talking about I'm talking about the guy that, that guards the Joker mm -hmm. toward the end. Yeah, but I thought he was also one of the ones that Harvey Dent suspected of being crooked. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think okay. that's I don't think that's the same guy. I could be I could be wrong. What do you stand? What, what do you? How are you doing that? <laughs> what are your legs? And you'll never do that again. Where 
where are the other drugs going? You know, I used to talk like this. You think I should talk like this anymore? No? Okay. I'll start sounding like Kevin Conroy. Well, he doesn't sound like that in Begins. He's got a slightly different voice in Begins. No, I know that. It's not as, it's not as breathing. That was a weird shot. See how big his head was? His body was tiny? No, Sounds you're right. Weird. But what I was just doing could have been an exaggeration of that voice because I'm not being voice modulated to be lower right now That's like true. he was. Giant fans are always creepy. And this this does, this of all of them we've seen thus far, this one is the one that looks the most like the it could exist in that universe costume-wise. Yeah. And as you, as you suggested, uh, landscape-wise, too. Yeah. I really love the look of Gotham and Begins and kind of wish we'd stuck with it. Yeah, me too. Me too. I realize we would have had to keep shooting in a big warehouse, and I don't know if we struck those sets. I'm assuming we did. But yeah. I get taken out just a little bit when it starts looking too much like the real world. And that's part of where that whole it's realistic and grounded thing comes in, where I'm like, yeah, but... It didn't start that way. It was also... Like, more so than other Batman things you've seen, more so than 89 or whatever, but it's still, and, and, and especially, you know, you know, Returns of the Schumacher movies, but it's it's still heightened. And Begins even Nolan grounded, discussed it not as realistic. being heightened. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I don't need it to get into really wacky pseudoscience, and I don't even, even need for it to go as far as, like, Mr. Freeze and things like that. But I still want it to feel like a world a little bit more heightened the water outside of time, and 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 you you had that with begins where uh, you had some you know slightly more futuristic type technology, but it also felt like uh, a world that was I don't don't, don't know maybe more seventies before forties, but it's not it's post a depression. Yeah, but I assume that was an isolated Gotham depression. That's the way they talk about it. Well, yeah, because Gotham is like a city-state that universe. It is. It is. If No Man's Land happened in that universe, no one would notice. I mean, yeah. I mean, forgetting what what they sort of do with No Man's Land in Dark Knight Rises, like when I first see when when I when I first see that world, I'm like, oh, okay. So you guys don't rely on the federal government at all. Like, like the federal government does nothing with the guy. Like Gotham is it's yeah, it's like Washington D.C. only not even connected to the rest of the United States at all. Of course you know how to roll that off your your lips. So this is a thing... This is super creepy. That I know I... I don't know if there's, back, if there's special features or something, but I know I've heard Goyer talk about this, where he was like... He was like, okay, well, Batman's going to be dosed with fear toxin, so we can go as crazy with Killer Croc as we want, but he isn't dosed with fear toxin yet, so when Killer well, Croc's got this metal thing up, over his mouth, so he's not breathing it. Yeah. So like, is that what Killer Croc looks like? Apparently not. Oh, well, that doesn't make Apparently, sense. according to Goyer, it's supposed to be like it's heightened because fear toxin. The but only he looks way it like would have made sense. Monster. The only yeah, I don't. He see now we're see, getting now weird he's stuff. weird. Okay, so so you're saying that's the realistic version of Croc, and now he's all crazy. Yeah. But he starts monster like he he starts too heightened even for the begins universe like no I'm he looks with like you. a Mike Mignola creature yeah yeah I was gonna say like a McFarlane thing he, he looks like uh, the the aliens from uh, Invasion yeah a little bit. yeah you know the uh, d- the green things the, it starts with a D I can't think of the uh, Dominators maybe is I, that I, what they're called I'm not, I didn't watch that crossover or read those comics yeah. I bought those. I haven't. I haven't reviewed them yet. I keep. Ta- I keep meaning to do that. I, I. I was gonna say. I keep talking about it. I don't think I've ever mentioned it. And now here's the the scarecrow thing that does not match where he will be in Dark Knight. Right. Because he's leading like a cult of people. And he has a green tongue, which is uh, always horrifying. I like his design. It's a really different. It makes scarecrow. you think he's just drinking raw sewage. He looks like Rat King or something. And he also doesn't have... Well, I, I like that for like him living in the sewer stuff. Uh, yeah. He also, like, they do the scythe thing. The scythe thing is not a thing in the Dark Knight universe. And this is the one written by David Gore. That's why this one's the weirdest to me. Yeah. And it's like, he knew you, what they were doing. <laughs> I, I, him, of all people, knew what they were yeah. doing. 
Why is this so far away from? Yeah, I can't. I can't remember anymore because the stuff all runs together for me. But does he have a a, a a writing credit on Dark Knight? He does, doesn't he? I think he just does story. I think story. I think it's story is him and, and Chris Nolan. But I mean, his name's on it. Yes, yes. No, no. He's involved in all three of them. Um, I think the writing is technically Jonathan. Yeah, because because um, because his, his name is is uh, I think solo on the script for Begins. It's it's just written by Goyer, and then if memory yeah. serves, I and don't think rises. It's just on. story, but we know he had a pass on it, and it looks like they kept some of his. Well, dialogue we also know in that. he had a pass on Dark Knight because I remember an interview with Jonathan Nolan where he said they sent him the first draft and he looked it over and was like, "Have you guys read Batman One recently? Because this is really similar where the Joker sends out his." But I think. But crediting's so weird in Hollywood. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, we, we, we've been talking about that a lot. Um, we know that he wrote, or I know from interviews with John Nolan, that whether his name is on the written by, he did write on... Batman is bleeding a lot in this. I'm going to ask the question I ask every time we go into sewers and anything. <laughs> what do sewers actually look like? Because I don't know, and everything depicts it as very different. Did sometimes it's real small, sometimes it's giant, massive. Does I this don't... require empirical research, Eric, or do we need to figure out if there's a way we can get into the sewer? I just want to know what it actually looks like. Well, and of course, I'm, it's different in different places. I mean, like, I think the deal is... Is this what the like we kind keep of New York using, sewers look like? Well, I was gonna say I think we keep using like, uh, like like old European type sewers. It's a gothic uh, city, so we've got to go for a gothic underground, you know, kind of kind of uh, ancient sewer. But like, system. this is what it kind of looks like in Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. So but maybe, maybe New York but we always looks like do that. that just to have like open spaces. I don't know how much New York looks like that, and, and like if if one city was like that, I would assume that's it. But yeah, I don't know anything about sewers. It's just, it's always different. I can never figure out what they really look like. But I guess you're, they probably do look different in different places. Eric and I are going to are, are gonna do some empirical research. We're going to go to New York just to look at the sewers. We will, we will see none of the mm -hmm. sites. And you know what will happen? We'll take a camera down there and we'll find, like, this river of slime. <laughs> and then we'll start yelling at each other. And there will be uh, this whole other ghost thing going on in the city, but it will have nothing to do with the river of slime that we find. Yeah. Better make it ten. It, look, it looks like it looked like he was about to pass out. <laughs> yeah, the the emoting in this is really strange. Yeah. You know, I have liked something about each of these costumes. Yeah. Okay, working through pain. This is one written by Brian Azzarello, which, as I remember, is really pretentious and really dry. Okay. And like, I'm gonna make a real heady Batman story, but it's really just like. Well, Azzarello can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes. Yeah. He could not uh, nail a Rorschach voice to save his life. I also think that these um, these kinds of Batman stories are really hit and miss. Where it's like, all right, we're not going to do a Batman story. We're going to go back. That that looks cool. Um, yeah. We're, we're going to go back and we're going to do like a training story. Where, like it's just Bruce Wayne. Like Eric can make that a screensaver. Sometimes those are good and sometimes they're boring as sin. Uh -huh. And I don't know what what makes one more enjoyable than the other, but. So this is supposed to be him bleeding out from the previous short. So we're we're going one short into the next. Okay. But he's bleeding here instead of here. So you, you can't even tell if that's what it is. Yeah, I mean... I guess the costumes look similar. you got to give them that. Yeah. It's not exactly the same. And the animation style is in the ballpark. It's not as, you know, different as some of the other ones have been. Well, the And the faces in this aren't as surreal as the, as yeah. the last one. Oh, he just cauterized that wound. And that guy is also screaming and bleeding everywhere. Oh, there's a lot of blood in this. That's a lot of blood. Yeah, I don't remember much about this one at all. I just remember being bored. That's the only <laughs> thing I remember about this. <laughs> that guy's missing an arm. It does kind of feel like the order they've placed these in, they're trying to they're they're trying to make them like heavier and I. Uh, 
you know, more about the ambiance as it goes along, I guess. Mm-hmm. And this is an idea that I think works better in the comics than it does, again, in the Dark Knight universe, because this he didn't gross. just, like, travel the world in Dark in Batman Begins. Like, he specifically went out to learn about the criminal element and the criminal psychology. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have shown up here. I wouldn't think so either. Regular Batman I just kind of goes around the world and, like, learns things. Like, I could buy that he, he wants medical experience. The, the Batman Begins Dark Knight Batman isn't about learning everything he can possibly learn, like comic book Batman is. Yeah. Because I'm sure Batman's a great surgeon. Ow, 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 ow. No, ow. that's... And honestly, that's maybe a little bit of a mistake. That begins Batman just went out looking for the criminal yeah. psychology? Yeah, that's fair. Well, criminal psychology and then just, you know, the means to fight injustice. Yeah. You know, I mean... I mean injustice. Injustice. Because he's also, uh, of course, you know, learning, learning martial arts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's learning about crime and how to fight crime. Right. But he doesn't seem to learn detective stuff... Yeah. Not that we know of, but that doesn't seem to be a. Even if he did some of that and we don't know it, that doesn't seem to be an expertise. It wasn't a driving. Yeah. And he seems to rely a lot on gadgetry with that stuff and just common sense. Fingerprints. That's not even. That's not even a fight. We all know all snakes can dislodge their jaw and eat uh, something whole. <laughs> it's a thing all snakes can do, even a common gardener snake. Um. So, are you saying, why are we betting against the yeah, snake? Yeah, we know the snake's going to win. Okay, so... Who's betting against the snake? In what... Now, now, forgive me, I might be completely ignorant. In what culture are denominations of bills determined by color? I'm sure that's a thing. Is it? But I mean, I'm like... sure that's But that drastically, where it's like, blue bills are this much, and red bills are this much. I actually think that's how Japanese money is, but is I'm not it? positive. Okay, I'm not just, positive. I've never seen that. Not not like Monopoly colored like that. I'm just saying it's real Monopoly-esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's like that, but I do think it's different colored ink. It's not all green in Japan. But I sure. Be. But it's not like Monopoly Sure, colors. but I would have thought like the background color was similar. Like, I, I think it's white with red ink, and then yeah. white with green ink, and then white with... But that was just like these indistinct like... <laughs> I think You're right, it is Monopoly money. So yeah, I, I, I may have no idea. Maybe there is a place in the world where they basically have Monopoly money, and I don't know it, but... Oh, man. We'll, we'll buy a bunch of Monopoly games, we'll go there, we'll be kings. <laughs> I don't know, this, this, this money's got the Power Rangers logo on it, but it uh, seems legit. But red is a thousand dollars. That shirt is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of dig it. Not for Bruce Wayne, but, uh... Bru but look, Eric, Batman does not wear nachos, okay? Yeah, Th I, I, This is gorgeous. I, I, I don't buy the Batman wears a Hawaiian shirt, but... <laughs> well, if it's that, you know, Bruce Wayne trying to separate out himself from his alter ego eventually. I mean, I realize he's not Batman yet there, but... No, I think Batman would, would wear, like, like a, like a potato sack before he'd wear a... <laughs> before he'd wear a... Like, Just Batman does not wear a Hawaiian dead. shirt. Have you ever worn a Hawaiian shirt? When I was a teenager, I think I had one, but... I got a te I, I got a Hawaiian shirt once in my early 20s. I never liked them. And I finally... And I was like, oh, this is why people wear these. They're so comfortable. But uh, I was told that I looked terrible, and, it, and then it was thrown away. But um, So again, I don't remember this at all, but I'm developing an opinion about it. It's boring. Yep, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, by not talking, we're emphasizing how important everything we're saying is. Well, that beat was okay, where I'm like, why are we lingering on this? Why are we lingering on this? Oh, his feet are in pain. Okay, like, Yeah, but that's we've been okay. doing that through the whole short. Yeah. Where we're just like, we're just going to be quiet here for a second. Because we only have eight minutes to tell this story, but we want you to feel like it's really dramatic. We're going to break him bad it. Yeah. Whoa. Ow. Um, I don't know if you guys have picked up on the theme of this short, but it's about pain. 
Well, I mean, it is called working through the pain. That's a thing that I strive to do. I, I, I didn't say it was a brilliant observation. Also, the, the fire coal thing, I have heard, is actually not that difficult to do. Like, as long, yeah. as, as, long as you keep moving, you will be fine. That's not that impressive. Well, and also the laying on spikes thing. Is that not that it's, difficult? It, uh, no, because, I mean, I mean, like, if they're evenly placed, it's about how you get on it in the first place. Once you're there... Mm -hmm. Does this feel weird? Like, almost like it was shrunk? Like, does the... You're does right! The aspect ratio is, is... Or not the aspect ratio, but yeah, it, it does seem like the image was... Yeah, kind of, like, compressed. Was compressed, it's yeah. Very strange. Weird! What path? The path of pain! Growing more terrible all the time! Path of the righteous man? Do we get a sense of where Bruce Wayne goes? Does he go around the entire world? Cause I in, don't know. In Begins, I get a sense that he just goes to kind of uh, the Asian area. Yo, I was... Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Like this is this is the Middle East. I don't get a sense that begins. With I, the no, I I thought part of that was 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 probably Middle Eastern. Okay. Uh, okay. The the beginning where he gets uh he gets picked up for stealing the Wayne box. Yeah. I feel like that yeah, was kind of. You're probably right. That seemed yeah. Middle Eastern to me. That this is really weird because now that we're talking about a thing that is ostensibly in the Begins Dark Knight continuity, I'm talking about Begins, and I didn't you get to, to talk yeah, about you Begins. Didn't get I was thinking about that earlier when you that were talking about That was one about of the hardest <laughs> things ever, and I know I cheated a couple of times. And that was my idea, by the way. What a stupid idea that was. It's like, I know, let's take Captain Logan's favorite Batman movie and not let him talk about it. But we've already done like two commentaries on that, and you were you on either silent. one of them. You could have been silent about eighty nine. I could what have been silent about this. Have to say I have about nothing to say about this. No, that's true. But I didn't come up with that. Well, no, you have to talk during this because we both oh, have to fill oh, time. Oh, he has a gun. Okay, I see where we're going with this. Oh God, another gun! I'm sorry. What were we gonna say? Well, we both have to fill time talking about it. You can't be silent on this one. We have to, we have to fill this. <laughs> Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of fast-forwarding. So it's really cold outside. and uh, It's a little sucks. chilly down here It right is a now. little chilly down here. And you're not wearing a long sleeve shirt or anything. No, it's all right. My hand is cold. Is it? But, like, everything else on my body is... Let's see. Yeah, a little bad. But, everything, but this hand is not. <laughs> That's interesting. Right? Yeah, I think not. maybe I'm cutting off blood circulation the way I'm That's sitting or something. Weird. I don't know. You, you've got to do something to even those out. Maybe like yeah. blow on the other yeah. one, or maybe. <laughs> we should have got hot chocolate again. We should have got hot chocolate again. Ow. She really does have the highest pain tolerance of anybody I've ever yeah. seen. You know you're badass when you can just stand there and take a board to the head well, you're bleeding, and just yeah. go like that? Oh, well, he can do it too. That is not the Batman we will see in Batman Begins who's grunting and falling. This Batman, if he fell off the, the railings, he'd, six, he'd, 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 be, he'd be fine. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even flinch. He wouldn't be rolling around in the rain going, Alfred! <laughs> <laughs> he just waited out. Hey, this is not a dance. <laughs> he also seems like a way better fighter than he is in Begins. Like, well, that's fine because it's stylistic and, and cartoon and whatever, but... He's flipping all over the place. I don't see Batman flip once in those movies. Yeah, and and of course, you know, the, the choreography here is very Asian. So, I mean... We're, it's more wire fooey than, like, the, the real, um... Well, you never see Bruce Wayne in those movies do like the kung fu no. stance thing. No, because he's his his uh, his fighting is based on Krav Maga, which is a Middle Eastern fighting style. Also, this is Middle Eastern, but they're doing the yeah. But yeah, it's just the sensibilities of the house. I would I would imagine. <laughs> but, well, but then then you have the question of like who's storyboarding it versus who's animating it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
So as bored as I am, kind of watching this, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it looks good, but like, yeah, as as boring as the story kind of is, I, I would rather uh, watch thirteen hours of this than Iron Fist. And sure, uh, sure, like I'd rather Iron Fist be about this guy. Yeah, but this feels. I feel like this would have stood out more if the rest of this, if all of these vignettes weren't boring and pointless. Like, this feels like it, this feels like it was intended to be, like, the breather vignette, where everything else was going to be, like, crazy, but everything else is kind of like this. You're saying the issue with this is a piece is pacing. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like, I feel like it maybe would have contrasted better if everything else was more, like, heightened anime um, if it was all like super actiony and and if, if this if this was preceded crazier. by once by, again like, eighty nine Batmobile yeah if this was preceded by like a Mecha Batman and like a Batman Joker story and like like if this was preceded by a bunch of like much bigger like this would Something feel like cosmic oh or... this is this is this is much more deliberately paced uh, but all of these have been deliberately paced so it just feels boring. Well, and I'm not saying you couldn't do a really great vignette movie that was all dark Batman, but at the same time wouldn't wouldn't part of the point of doing a Batman vignette film to be to drive point, drive home the point that you can do Batman in a million different ways? Like we, you and I are always talking about how versatile this character is. Yeah, I would do several vignettes of really different, really disparate types. Yeah, and tones, and you know, you you do you do some that are more comedic than others, and you do some that are more more realistic and believable than others. Yeah. You know, we do not get any of the the anime that you hate, where like the big heads and like the crying. Like we'll do. We're, not, we're not doing that in this. Yeah. Um, so this is the final short. It's almost over. This is the Deadshot short, and this is what I want Batman Ninja to look like. Like I want it to be animated by this house. Yeah, but I don't like the faces. I'm accustomed. I like. I'm used to Kawajiri's work. I don't know if this is Kawajiri, but it looks like Kawajiri. Okay. So I'm. I'm just. This is what Ninja Scroll. Well, that's just a personal taste thing. Too many li- anime movies. Too many lines. It's almost like it's going out of its way to to be like, look how realistic we are to the point where it's not. So yeah, it's so realistic. It's stylized. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also there's also a notion here that I like that is the first time I saw it. I'm sure it's not the first time it's used, but that uh, he keeps the gun that that uh, shot his parents. Oh, um, I forgot all about and that. And that when he and that when he fights people, he takes the guns off of them. It looks better farther back. Yeah, it's just when you do those big close-ups, I don't care yeah. for the lines. I mean, this guy looks more like what I think of when I think of Bruce Wayne. Mm. <laughs> that's a that's a great line, actually. I really like the idea. And will be the name of my next album, "Bag Full of Tragedy." I really like the idea of this, that, like, using Deadshot to deal with Batman's issues with guns yeah. is a really good idea. And it seems all kind of right there. And we're going to see Batman, like, break down this gun, I think, if I remember correctly. We're going to see Batman, like, break this gun. Like, I like the idea that Batman knows everything about guns. Yeah. Like, he is an expert on well, the, it on makes the sense item that, that killed his, his parents. And, and also, just in his war on crime. Yeah. You yeah. deal with guns all the time. It's it's not like just because you don't want to use one. Like like Batman would be an idiot and would be dead already if he was so much in denial about guns he pretended like they didn't exist. So I just say Deadshot's coat is really cool. Yeah, he's got a hat. I like the hat. That's kind of the most anime thing to do with that. Yeah. 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 yeah he's, he's dressed like Alucard. That's um, awesome. So. I don't, think, I don't think there's going to be really a point. Well, I, I guess we could talk about this when, when we get to the... Um, to the. Uh, I don't know why that scream was funny to me. The Suicide Squad uh, animated film? Yeah. But uh, I love Deadshot. All characters, yep. including Deadshot, that have the, the scope here makes no sense. <laughs> how, does, how does having something that like, like locks on help your hands? How does that tell you where your guns are aiming, right? Unless it's, like, I guess, connected to your gun so that, like, you're seeing what your yeah. gun looks, right? Yeah, that's a good point, because, like, how would that help you aim it? It's yeah. Like, it's like, okay, you can see you can see the person closer, but that's not going to help you with the precision of where the, the, the scope goes, or where the, the front of the gun goes. And this is the short that feels the most like what I thought this movie was going to be, or what it could have been. Because it's just like Batman fighting Deadshot. Like, it feels the most like... Um, 
it's it's more of just a crime drama thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Batman fighting the supervillain, and and Deadshot would have made perfect sense in the Dark Knight universe. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's a little more costume than I think maybe he would have been, but I don't know. I don't think so. Not any more than the way they did Catwoman. I don't. Yeah, think. I guess you're right. It felt that way at the time. How, you know, and there's Chris Allen again. Maybe he'll die in this short. Wow, his glasses are cool. Whoa! Whoa! Those eyes are weird. <laughs> Batman's got glass eyes now. Wow, look at that future. Oh, it looks better from the side. Pad phone thing. It's because you can't see his pupils from the side. I like that suit too. Yeah. I like all these suits. Really good. I do like that they have different suits, even if that doesn't make sense with yeah. the universe. Like, it, it is cool they have different. But th again, as we said before, that's why we want these all to just be different things. That Gordon looks great. And also, if the, I should also say, even if if you did what we wanted and got this out of squarely, you know, you know, begins Dark Knight now or weren't ambiguous mm -hmm. about it, but the way these these shorts were loosely connected in some way, even though they all looked really different. That's acceptable too, right? Yeah, yeah. That, like that still could have been cool. I really like the Victorian look of this Gotham. Does that Batman show up in? Does well, it, I was so like I that? So I picked this up because I feel like this is sort of supposed to be that Batman, but he's got the oval, doesn't he? Yeah. I don't think this Batman has the oval. Which makes Wait, sense. No, this doesn't have the oval. Oh, does it not? Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. No, I think this okay. is that Batman, but less stylized okay. looking. Okay. It's almost like somebody looked at that, this that one That bat is weird because it looks like the oval bat without the oval. It I've seen that in It things. doesn't have that. I have two. I, I think Tim Sale does that. Um... No, I like that. Where you're saying it's got the round. Yeah, it's yeah. rounded here as if, you know, you put an oval around it. Oh, look at that city. Yeah. Okay, but it's really fair. Victorian, I really that like it. also looks like looks like the Begin City. Yeah, that yeah, one a shot bit. we yeah. got anyway. Yeah, he's doing it again. <laughs> okay, so he does at least do it one more time. Yeah, it's not so like he'll never do this again. And it's such an anime Bat way to do Batman. Batman thinks he's Spider Man. Uh, he keeps going upside down. He's got magnets in his feet. <laughs> is that what it is? That's I assume. It's either that or he's got like claws in his boots. Yeah, I have no idea how, how he's doing that. We're not just don't ask questions, Eric. I mean, that feels like a ninja thing to do. Don't don't a, don't ask questions. Oh my god, the shape of that game. Yeah. It's so pretty. Listen to to how dynamic that music is. It's wonderful. Not a single person looking out the window. What little anime I've seen relies really heavily on score to create more of an epic feel, especially when you have a lot of still shots or things that are barely moving. Mm. I was at a store the other day that was playing some Dragon Ball Z, which I know nothing about and have never watched at all, and didn't realize uh, how heavily it relies on uh, like like a big upbeat like hard rock score. Well, uh, what were you? I don't know what it was. Okay, okay, because. When we brought it over here, we rescored it and okay. made it more hard rocky. That's interesting. But I don't know. It depends on what you're watching. Because, I mean, there is some rock stuff in the original score as well. Um, the original score... Well, it was definitely scored by us because it was it was an English song with English lyrics. But Oh, oh um, okay. But it worked. Some of the you know, like, some of the movies uh, just use, like, there's a disturbed song. It, and, it uh, gave it such an energy. Yeah. I really liked yeah. that. Okay. I'm going to say something that's not going to mean a lot to a lot of people, mm -hmm. but his face looks like the deadly bulb, and that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the name! The deadly bulb! It's a TIG episode called Heroes. And now all I can imagine Eric is dead shot with a pig for a leg, and... <laughs> now my all my new friends are giving me light bulb-related gifts! I don't know what the rivets do for his costume. It makes him kind of like a mummy. But I don't care who you are, it's always cool when Batman does this and pulls yes. out three battery. Yep. It's always cool. 
Yeah. And it's always three. Have you noticed that? It's always well, three. Because that's the room you have between your fingers. Is that is that? It? But he never does it with two. You can do it with two. You could do it. And the two. but he never does that. It's always three. I think three. when he does two, he does it like as if he's holding two cards, where it's between the thumb and the finger, where he's like, I got two. Now, if you were a Ninja Turtle, you could only ever do it with two. Yeah, it's true. You wouldn't have enough enough gaps between your fingers. I imagine that's true. I'm also not sure if Denny O'Neill wrote any of these shorts, which would make it even more amazing that he's on the commentary track. Yeah, we'll, I was we'll going to ask you, why is he there? Um, I don't know. It seems like he just showed up to have a conversation about I Batman. I love the depth in this. Uh, this slow motion is actually really effective. It was smart of them to put this last, because it is the most exciting and dynamic of them. Yeah. And they have bookended it with vignettes that are taking a lot of cues, again, from action serials. Mm -hmm. You've got the classic train chase thing. It's always the Russians. Why do the Russians want him dead? <laughs> that is a real whimpering dead shot. Do you know how many times have you ever seen a dead shot said that, that to Batman? Whimpering? Okay, we are still... <laughs> I can't believe how long we held on that. Like, yeah, it's a, gr it's a great looking shot, but you guys are really patting yourselves on the back over that shot. Well, they needed to be uh, 75 minutes and, and 6 <laughs> seconds, and there, were 70, and there were 74 minutes and 98 seconds. Are you sure it wasn't the gratuitousness of, we got blood down Batman's arm, y'all? I'm Sally Vacuum. But there are a lot of there are a lot of the, a lot of assassins that are like I don't know known to the public. They're like better known as the assassin Deadshot. I, I guess a, the Jackal, but that's kind of the only one I know. I know you could just call this a snooty rich person thing, but or just a Batman has lots of cool gadgets, so of course he has a wall with his parents' pictures that go over a TV. But I have a lot of respect for people who don't like. Like like uh, put a whole room around a television. I always really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, yeah, there's one in there, but we can see it when we're not using it, and we don't have to have it on all the time when there's company over. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Bruce Wayne for not being obsessed with watching television all the time. Of course, he can't be. He's Batman. Yeah, he has other things to do. Yeah, it doesn't really Batman count as Batman. It doesn't. That? It doesn't. You know, you know, Batman doesn't watch movies. Can we assume Batman knows nothing about popular culture? And you notice he never makes pop culture references, hardly, no, hardly and anything. and that should be a, like a like a joke occasionally, right? Where like someone makes a reference, and he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't get that. We're like, we treat him like he's Captain America. What do you mean? It's alive. It's alive. All I right. forgot Bruce Tim was was producing this, but of course he was because he he, he used did to produce all, all of these, yeah, all the way through this, yeah. So I am interested to see with the writers' credits because I'm pretty sure I nailed all of the ones I remembered, but I don't know some of them. So you'll yeah, see. and this came out before I was paying as much attention to that kind of stuff. Have I got a story for you? Story by Gor Jordan Goldberg and screenplay by Josh Olson. Don't know that so one. We don't know who those people are. But it, but I mean, it makes sense that that's some nobodies because I mean they might have done something that we're, we just we yeah. just don't know. But um, considering they just poorly ripped off a Batman episode, I mean a, a New Adventures episode. I bet you they don't even know that exists. And they thought they had such a, such a great idea. There's no way, right? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I guess that is an obvious enough idea. I mean, it's a cool idea, but I, I, I'm with you. I guess I could see multiple people coming up with that. In Between Studios. That's weird. Because it did the In Between Animation and then In Between Studios. And there were a lot of names just for that one short. Yeah. I didn't expect this to be to be here for too long, but uh, we're gonna be sitting here. This is this is gonna be a right, really crossfire. long credit sequence here. Starting these voices, directed by story by that's also Jordan Goldberg, but that's it's written by Greg Rock. Okay, right, right, so maybe right. so maybe Jordan Goldberg is the like mastermind of this whole thing, and he's getting credit for all the stories. Well, if that's the case, they should have crossed a little more. Because you get the sense that they were completely produced separately, and if there if, if there was kind of a guiding hand, I wish he was guiding it a little more. Yeah, it does not <clears throat> feel like there was a guiding hand. Mm -mm. Kevin Feige, that guy was not. No. 
field test. Yeah, uh, that so, one he wrote. So it seems like so he he's credited for storing all three of these, which means he plotted this out. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, which also means that this isn't any of their stories. So forget what I said about that being an afterthought. If from the very beginning, they conceptualized this as a piece. So, like, does that mean that, like, the working through pain one, he was just like, yeah, I don't know, it's a story. Yeah, David Goyer wrote the, the yeah. darkness one. Okay. Does that mean that, that they just, like, he was like, yeah, I don't know, um, like, it's going to be a story where, like, we flashback and he, he, he learns not to... To like deal with pain well, like, I guess. Okay, that's so weird. You would think if you were just doing the story for these, you'd be a little more inventive with the stories. Yeah, and I kind of wonder just like where they found him and why he was the guy that put all this together. Yeah, he's probably one of because it the... doesn't feel like nobody's excited to be here. That's what's so weird about this he's project. He's probably one of. Bruce Timm's people, because I don't know them very well. I'll look them up real Yeah, quick. probably so. But it does feel like a thing that a lot of people were excited to be involved with. Yeah. Like, it should have been something special. It's treated that way in I would argue every other aspect. Yeah. And the soundtrack is quite good. He's a film producer... I didn't look at music credits. I don't know if it was the same person scoring all of it or not. It did, to my ear, kind of have one pretty distinct sound that, that surprisingly wasn't going too much to uh, Hans Zimmer, which you would kind of expect it to do. So he works a lot with Christopher Nolan. He is the oh. producer of Inception, The Prestige, Interstellar, Man of Steel, well, okay. and Dark and So they went to him specifically to make this part of that universe. Oh, this show was written by Alan Burnett. Oh, interesting. Uh, but yeah. Okay, yeah. that's really weird. Yeah. So he's not a writer. He's a producer. Maybe he didn't give them enough mandate. Maybe. That seems like a mistake. It feels like this should have been David Goyer, right? Yeah. Given that Goyer's writing on this, it, like, just come up with you know a couple of paragraphs like this is what we want the short to be about. Like, have Goyer do it, because this guy clearly had no sense of what this universe was like. Yeah. Or, or again, just didn't bring people in enough. Like, didn't didn't give them enough of a sense of what what he wanted. Maybe there's communication problems. I don't know. But starting with him... It's weird as a It's piece. very clear that it's supposed to be the Dark Knight universe. Like, they started from that place. Yeah. Because that guy just produces Chris Nolan films. So anyway, uh, there's Gotham Knight. That was kind of fascinating, honestly, to go back to. Yeah. Um, like I sort of expected, that was sort of more fun talking through it. Like, mm. I think if I just sat here and watched it, I'd It'd get bored really and fall cool. asleep. Yeah. yeah. Uh... And again, at some point, I will do a rewind and probably will not have much more to say than what we just, you know, <laughs> said. But, um, but I don't know. a sneak peek at Wonder Woman. There, uh, well, I, I have that twice in different, <laughs> different versions because that, cause that, uh, that really cool double disc just came out yeah. um, a few months ago and I, I, I got that. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching, folks. Sure, appreciate it. And I believe our next movie is Dark Knight. I believe so as well. Because this so, came out a couple months, or like a month before. We will go right into that next time. Look forward to that. We're jazzed. This is going to be the first commentary we've done on Dark Knight, which is really weird. Yeah. That, that has not happened on the channel yet. And that, that's it's been like that for various reasons. There were a couple of plans that backfired at different points. And so, uh, finally, it will be a Batmania thing, which means it will almost certainly be looser than a standard commentary. Although, uh, although I don't know. I mean... Like, like you and I know that movie so well, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it may it may end up turning into a more sort of academic thing. Is is these sometimes tend to end up doing, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Um, you know, unless somebody just decides to run out and get food in the middle, you never know what might happen during a mania commentary because they're crazy. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I am Captain Logan, and I'm Eric. Thanks for watching, folks.